I, yeah, no, I think that what I see from my point of view is I see people who are doing well on Etsy or their own website or whatever. And then they're like, oh, okay. Like, um, I think I should, I should do Facebook or Instagram or yeah. TikTok or Twitter or whatever. And they start off really, really well, because obviously, as you know, when we all start off on a project, we're super excited and we're like, yeah, yeah. let's, let's get always it. very keen. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then you get to a point where you've done like, I don't know, maybe like a month to a six weeks worth of posts. And then you're like, well, that hasn't achieved anything. Do you think that's like the biggest entry point into the cycle? I do. Yeah, I do. It's frustration. And that's, that's, I mean, it's it's the antithesis of what I teach people because Mm -hmm. there are so many people out there now who sell these or, you know, you can download them free or they sell them as programs. These kind of quick win things. You know, Mm -hmm. I got, I got 10,000 followers on TikTok in 10, in 10 days. All right. But you did but the millions and millions of other people didn't because that's not how it works there's always one lucky person in but actually what what i teach and what i firmly believe in is determination it takes Mm. longevity and it takes a strategy Mm. and you have to just keep doing it you know none of our businesses are going to make us millionaires overnight because the world just doesn't work like that so expecting social media to suddenly be this incredible launch pad overnight Mm. it's it's not it's not realistic and that lack of well the the over expectation I suppose is what then feeds into the into the self-doubt into the criticism because you see she's she's done this you know 10,000 in 10 days why have I not done this and it's not real it's not real life it just isn't real life yeah no no you are right and I think that a lot of people you know again I speak I've spoken to a lot of people who you know when I look at their shops and things like that and I go onto their like Facebook links Twitter links it's just broken links where people have tried it for like a month or two and then gone "Mm, no this is not for me and one one thing that I that I teach is like, like the main thing is start with one channel absolutely just just start with that master that master that get into it um so like for handmade bosses that was youtube and i really got into it i was like right i need to master this first did that and then you start branching out but i think what a lot of people do is that they go i need the big four or the the big five now including tiktok um i i need to I, i i need to to do that do you think that small business owners need to be on the mall or do you think it's just a case of one will do as long as it's the right one absolutely no you're you're yeah agree, agree completely i've always taught that you know even back in 2009 i was like <laughs> do one and do one well and then you could, you could kind of only really do well i'm supposed youtube but you know there was facebook there was twitter there was linkedin you know you you mm. do one and you do it well even back then and now there is so much noise because we're all on social media. We're all on all the channels. And, you know, you talk to your friends on Facebook and then you look at the inspirational stuff on Instagram. We use them for different purposes. But, yeah, you you need to do research into which is going to be the best platform for mm. your audience. Mm. And by profiling your audience, you'll be able to kind of work that out. It's one thing that I, I work through with my students. And then that's your focus. And if you're not on Facebook, it doesn't matter. If you're not on TikTok, it doesn't matter. If Instagram is the only thing that you're doing, that's okay. I mean, obviously you need to, it needs to feed into a wider customer journey. So you need to do email marketing and all that kind of back end mm. stuff that comes with it. But just in terms of the social media, the public facing stuff, do one, do it well, put all your energy and efforts into it, build a following, get comfortable with the way you create content and then you can repurpose a lot of that content onto your secondary and your tertiary and whatever the fourth one would be. Um, four, four, three. Four, three. I don't know. I don't know what it is now. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, ab- absolutely. Because being on more than one platform doesn't necessarily mean double or triple the work because it's mm. the content can be repurposed mm. strategically. But there's the engagement and that's what takes the time. That isn't mm. healthy at all. So in regards to the cycle of comparing ourselves to this maker, to that maker, to what advice would you give for people listening slash watching slash wherever you're consuming this? Um, what advice would you give people who are like, I can't do Instagram because um, one of my 
other competitors shops they're doing it so much better than me and I cannot compete with them what what advice would you give to them okay well I would just say um I'm a social media coach and have been since 2009 I have quite small followings on social media because my time has been invested in training and coaching other people rather than growing my own following but you look on social media you will find probably a billion social media coaches in whatever guys they come in you know they come in all sorts of different packages specializing in all sorts of different things some (laughs) great some really truly terrible but you know I've the fact that I've been doing this for a hell of a lot longer than most people Mm. but actually my followings are relatively small because it's about conversion Mm. um you could look I could think well, I've not got 100,000 followers. I'm not going to do this anymore. But it doesn't matter. It's just about knowing that the Mm. people that you work with, you provide real value to those people and you really make a difference. You know, if if, if you're making, you mentioned someone making a scarf, if that scarf makes someone smile and keeps their neck warm and is a lovely present that someone opens on their birthday, that's really superb. And that's what matters. Not that somebody else has also made a scarf. You know, if you want, I could go to Marks and Spencer's and get a scarf. I could go to John Lewis and get a scarf. I could go to probably Aldi and get a scarf from the middle (laughs) aisle. But it's all about choices that we make. And we choose the thing that fits and suits us. And there is a customer base, a huge customer base for all of us. So it doesn't Mm. matter what anyone else is doing. Everyone's journey is different. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at the amount of people who are on Instagram, who potentially, you know, if you run Facebook ads um, and you look on the back end of it and you see like the the size of people who like, who like this page and do this and that. And it's like two, three million people. Oh, it's ludicrous. Yeah. And when you see that, you're like, why was I ever worried about running out of potential customers? Like, where did that fear come from? And I think it's never going to run out of potential customers. Yeah, It's just fears at the end of the day. It's just fears. And as business owners, and I'm sure you've been through it, running a business from start to growth to scale is, (laughs) is a journey of self-discovery at the very least. And it just, isn't it just so yeah. you end up digging up all of these fears that come out of the woodwork and you're thinking where, where did that come from like the fear of success that is actually a, a lot more of a bigger a bigger problem especially for you know when I'm doing lives and stuff like that that's a lot more of a bit a bigger problem than I think anyone thinks it is you know you think of being having success and you think oh I definitely want that but then when you start to get there, all these things come out and you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of imposter syndrome creeping in there. <laughs> Definitely. Oh my goodness, we have all been there. What if Let I find go. out I don't know what I'm talking about? What if that happens? You know, I mean, I think everybody, yeah, everybody goes, goes through that. That's completely, completely natural. But one thing that someone said to me, oh, crikey, I mean, I don't know how many years ago. I guess maybe eight or nine years ago, I was relatively um, new to, to having my own business. And someone, someone really prominent, a speaker at an event said to me, we were talking afterwards, said to me, nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> and actually, it stuck with me. Hmm. And I just thought, nobody does. And the amount of business owner friends that I've got, be they, you know, Instagram friends or actual real friends in, friends in real life, is that that's, we all have these same fears and worries. And just accepting that and thinking, well, that's just the way it is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference to how you grow your, grow your business at all. And it doesn't make any difference to your customers if you're still making them happy. Yeah. Yeah, no, you are right. You are right. And you don't have to be an expert. I know exactly 100% of the time what you're doing in every single aspect of your business because no one, newsflash, not even pff, Richard Branson, um, I don't know who else, but you know what I mean? Uh, Elon Musk, like they they don't know every inch of everything in their business. They don't. And neither neither should you, because frankly, that would just be freaking exhausting if you did or you, you know, wanted to. Well, it wouldn't be very interesting either, because where have you got to go from that? You know, you've already achieved everything. So, hmm, okay then. Yeah, I'm just going to move on now. I got (laughs) bored. got bored of that. I'm off. (laughs) Hey boss, did you enjoy our mini episode? You can catch the full episode on your favorite podcast app or watch it on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing conversations coming your way soon.